Hello photographers, today we're going to take a look at the Cobra Flash Modifier. Now, quick disclosure, I did receive this Cobra Flash Modifier for free. The co-founder of the company found me at WPPI and asked me if I wanted to check out the product. Despite that, my reviews and my opinions of this product are entirely my own. So the Cobra Flash Modifier exists in the same category as your Gary Fong Light Sphere and your Mag Mod stuff. And what I've got here is the Cobra Flash Modifier Full Kit. This costs $100. And inside of this bag, what you get is the Cobra Flash Modifier itself with the grip that goes on your flash and this little wallet that has six different gels in it. You have a red, green, and blue gel, and then you have a full CTO, a half CTO, and a quarter CTO gel. Now, we'll come back to these gels in a bit. Let's first look at the modifier itself. The Cobra uses the same basic principle as MagMod in that you have this grip thing that you need to put onto your flash, and it goes over the flash head like so. Now, one of the interesting things about this is you can see along the bottom here, on each side, there are these little cutouts. And the idea behind those cutouts, the founder told me, was to allow some venting for heat from your flash head to be able to dissipate. Now, the other piece, of course, is the Cobra modifier itself. And this here is molded silicone. You can see it's super flexible and can take all kinds of abuse. You'll notice on the back side, it's black. And then inside, there is a reflective surface. So when you have this on your flash, what it's going to do is take some of this light and let it go upwards, but also bounce it forward. And as you saw, putting this on is pretty darn simple. You see, you have these little molded silicone clip edges and they are going to clip onto the edges that are protruding out here. So when you slide this thing on, it just kind of automatically grips and it holds quite nicely. Obviously, if you whip it around too much, it'll come off. And if you want to do a comparison with like the MagMod, let's see, they both come off pretty similarly. This obviously goes on a little bit easier than this in terms of picking it back up, but they can both be shaken off. Now, it's quite similar to MagMod, but one of the biggest advantages that the Cobra has over the MagMod, in my opinion, is this right here. In order to use MagMod stuff, you've got to put this mag grip thing on your flash head, and you've got these two huge protrusions out on either side where the magnets reside. The Cobra doesn't have that and doesn't protrude nearly as much. Yes, the Cobra does add some bulk, but it is nowhere near the amount of bulk that the MagMod mag grip adds. Now, the other thing I really, really like is that the gel holder is built right in. See this clip right here? And then these little edges right here, that is designed to allow me to take this gel and just pop it in like that. So I am most excited about this Cobra because of the gel system. In fact, let me show you what happened when I first opened this. These are gels and all I have to do is pop this in here like this. And it's that quick and easy. I am so excited about this as a gel holder that I can't even explain it, guys. The MagMod, on the other hand, requires you to buy another grip thingy that magnets onto here, and then you buy the gels that go into that grip thingy. So it's another thing that you got to carry around and worry about. But let's talk about this as a flash modifier. I actually did a comparison between the Cobra, the Gary Fong Light Sphere, the Mag Sphere, and the Mag Scoop. So let's look at the photos. So we'll start with no modifier whatsoever. This is a photograph of me shot in my studio with the flash on the camera pointing at the ceiling. And for reference, my ceiling is about eight and a half feet tall. And my ceiling is white, which means it's a really good bounce surface. And you can see bouncing off my ceiling, I got some really nice results. Now let's take a look at this and compare it to what you get with the Cobra. Because the Cobra has that reflective surface on the back, it bounces a good deal of light forward into your shot. You can see that I, as the subject, am brighter and am lit better because of the light that the Cobra throws forward. Now, I didn't change the camera or the flash settings from shot to shot in these comparisons because I wanted you to see how these different modifiers change the light. Now, let's take a look at the Cobra and compare it to the Gary Fong light sphere. You can see the light sphere looks a little bit more like just shooting the flash at the ceiling. But compared to the Cobra, there's not as much light moving forward. And the same thing goes for the Mag Sphere. The Mag Sphere gives you a shot that's 
that's quite similar to the Gary Fong. And when you compare the MagSphere shot to the Cobra, once again, the Cobra is throwing more light forward because of that reflective surface. Probably the best comparison is in between the Cobra and the Mag Scoop. Here you can see the Mag Scoop throws quite a bit more light forward, but that makes sense because the Mag Scoop doesn't have a front diffusion surface. It's simply reflecting all of the light off of the back surface. And because that light's not passing through a front diffusion surface, you're not losing any power. So you actually get more forward throw out of the Mag Scoop than you do out of the Cobra. Now that scenario is with the flash on the camera. In this next scenario, I took the flash off camera and put it on a light stand and positioned it at camera right about five and a half or six feet up. And in the first photo, once again, it's just the bare flash bouncing off of the ceiling. In the next shot, however, we have the Cobra back in. And once again, the Cobra is throwing light forward. Because it's throwing light forward, it's casting a shadow on the background. However, if you were running and gunning and taking photos, as long as your subject was away from some sort of a wall or other background material, that shadow would just fall right out of your shot. And then when we compare the Cobra to the Gary Fong, once again, that Gary Fong is also throwing some of that light forward. And you can see that the shadow qualities are basically identical in terms of softness. The next shot, however, is the Cobra as compared to the MagSphere. And because the MagSphere doesn't throw much light at all, forward, you get a shot that is pretty close to identical to the bare flash being pointed at the ceiling by itself. And finally, we have the light scoop from MagMod once again, and that gives you a look that is very similar to that of the Cobra. Now, those two scenarios were shot indoors, but I wanted to test and compare these in a scenario where you didn't have a bounce surface available. So I went outside and I took some photos out there. First is just the no flash shot to give you an idea of what the ambient light looked like. And the very first photo is the bare flash on camera, which of course looks horrible. Now in the next shot, we have the Cobra. And here you can see the difference between a bare flash and a light modifier like this. Because the Cobra is still on camera, it doesn't look amazing because it's basically flash that's shining right into the face of your subject. However, you're gonna get basically the same look from any modifier you use on camera. For instance, in this next shot, we have the Gary Fong, and in the next shot, we have the Mag Sphere, and finally, we have the Mag Scoop. Now, once again, I didn't change the flash settings from shot to shot because I wanted to show you how these different modifiers throw and modify the light. And the ones that give you the most forward throw are the Cobra and the Mag Scoop because they have those reflective back surfaces and they're designed to create that forward throw. Now this final scenario, I took the flash off camera once again. This time I set it up at camera left, basically in the same position, up at about six feet or so, pointing at me as the subject. And once again, with the first shot, you can see that that direct light doesn't look amazing, but it actually looks quite a bit better simply because it's been moved off camera and over to the left a little bit. Now, when we put the Cobra on there, we're actually now in this case getting less light. In the first shot, the light is pointed directly at me as the subject. In the second shot, a lot of this light is escaping up into the sky, but we're getting some forward throw out of this. And I wanted to be able to compare the shadows. So I took the shot here with the Cobra and increased it by one stop in light room. And you can see that they're basically identical. And that's to be expected because it's a small modifier. That's the physics of light. It doesn't matter if it's a Cobra or a Mag Scoop or a Mag Sphere or whatever. If it's a small modifier, it's not going to soften your light very much because it's small. This next comparison is the Gary Fong. And once again, the Gary Fong is throwing some light forward, but not a ton. And the shadow characteristics are pretty much the same. And here we've got the Mag Sphere. And once again, the Mag Sphere doesn't throw a lot of light forward. So the exposure is actually quite low. And if I increase it in Lightroom up two stops, you can see once again that the characteristics of the light are basically the same. And then finally, we have the Mag Scoop, which once again, because it's designed to throw a lot of light forward, gives you qualities that are very similar to the Cobra itself. So what does all this mean? First, it means that it doesn't matter what small modifier you choose, it's a small modifier. However, these types of modifiers are still useful. So should you buy a Cobra or a Gary Fong or a MagMod? Well, I would say skip the Gary Fong. A MagMod, as I said earlier, I really, really do not like the bulk created by the MagMod magnet head. 
And so if I was picking a small modifier for my light, I would definitely go with the Cobra. Now, if you prefer the Magmod system, then by all means get the Magmod. But here's the real reason I love and would buy the Cobra. I don't shoot in situations where I need small modifiers like this. So I'll probably never use this, but I intend to buy two more of these and two more of these gel sets. Because if you've seen any of my photography, you know that I like using gels. And I love the fact that I can very quickly and very easily put a gel on my flash and take it off and switch it out. And I can do that in a way that doesn't add a ton of bulk to my flash head. Now, if you have any questions about the Cobra or flash photography or using gels in your photography or anything else for that matter, let me know down in the comments. And then do me a favor and like this video and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos. And then get out there and take some damn photos. Thank you for sticking around to the end. Flash photography can be intimidating, especially when you first get your flash gear and start wondering how the heck do I use this stuff to create gorgeous photos like the pros do. To help you with that and to save you years of time, I put together a complete flash photography course to help photographers just like you. All you gotta do is visit this link right here to check it out and then get out there and take some damn photos.